Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing the San Cristobal de la Habana El Principe. As per usual, this cigar review was conducted using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can either use at home for your own reviews or use as a quick reference if you don't have time to watch this entire video. Just go into the description below this video, check out the link to the full written review, and you'll see the final PDF version, which will give you a full breakdown of this cigar within about 60 seconds. Furthermore, the cigars were stored in the small Bovedo acrylic humidor that you see beside me. Normally, you, we use a large Bovedo acrylic humidor with 69% packs, but in this case, we have a small one for Cubans that stores them at 65% and monitored with a Bovedo butler. The El Principe came out in 2004 following the initial release of the San Cristobal de la Habana brand. This is owned by Habanos SA in Cuba, and it was actually a brand that existed before the revolution when it became defunct during the revolution. It wasn't uh, reignited until 1999. However, it exists by name only and has actual no relation to the original brand. As mentioned, it's a Cuban brand, therefore it is made in Havana. It is a Cuban puro, so it only contains Cuban tobaccos. It is manufactured using an entubado method, which consists of rolling the leaves into tubes, which are twisted together to create an airflow. The El Principe is a small Petit Corona or Minuto uh, Vitola, which is four and three eighths in length and 49 in ring gauge. Interestingly, it's likely more or less the same blend as the La Punta that we reviewed in a previous video, which you can see up here and in the description below. We've also got a full written review of that one too. However, what we thought would be interesting would be to do a standalone review of the El Principe to see how it compares to La Punta, given that it is a small Vitola and could be convenient for certain occasions. Well, we're gonna jump right in with the look and feel. So as I mentioned, this is a box press shape. Uh, it has a very straight roll, that being said, and quite a firm spring. We're looking at a pale milk chocolate hue. The oils of the sheen aren't overt. It does glimmer slightly in the light, much like the La Punta uh, Vitola. The veins uh, can be on the, a bit on the coarse side and somewhat rustic, depending on the cigar that you pick up. And the aromas on the foot are very similar to the La Punta. You're looking at a combination of nutmeg, cinnamon, and terracotta. Now jumping into the pre-light, so the pre-light, uh, in my experience of the La Punta, is a little bit looser. You're looking at a good airflow here. The flavors are not quite as rich, but there is a, some, some difference here. Whereas I experienced cinnamon, suede, and terracotta, in this case, it's gonna be cinnamon, grapefruit zest, and nutmeg. There is a slight uh, citrus spice just on the tip of the tongue. I guess now what I'll have to do is light this up, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, we're well into the first third, and great little burn here. Slight wonky burn line, but it's not wavy. It's not too disconcerting. I imagine it'll correct up, but we'll see how that gets on later. But the uh, backbone's great. It's a, it's a zesty little bugger. Um, it's actually quite a departure from the La Punta uh, Vitola. So maybe there is a slight difference in the blend, or because it's a smaller cigar, we're gonna get a different part of the, uh, of the tobacco leaves, which could give it a little bit of extra body. So whereas the uh, La Punta was a mild to medium in the first third, this is definitely a medium. It consists of notes of uh, some charred bay leaf, lemon zest, which are, are quite overt and do um, tickle the, the tip of the tongue, and some coffee grounds that provide some substance to the overall bouquet. On the retrohale, you might get a hint of pepper, and it, or you might consider it to be more on the zesty side of things. Let's see how this gets on in the second third. I was just thinking, oh no, I've gone past the second third, I'm gonna have to start all over again, but actually I forgot just how small the cigar is, and I only just past the halfway point. The uh, flavors have evolved, uh, the body has settled a bit because at one point it was like medium plus uh, during the transition between the first and second third. It was really, uh, the retrohale was really stinging the nostrils, it's starting to get a bit of a nicotine bomb. However, it has calmed down, now we've reached the halfway point. And we're looking at um, quite a spicy second third though. Uh, the overall dominant note is some citrus thyme, or charred 
citrus thyme leaves. And citrus thyme is a variety of thyme that has a slight zestiness to it. So here the bay leaf and the, and the lemon zest, I'd argue that they've more or less uh, accorded to such an extent that they've become their own unique single note. There's also some uh, curcuma or turmeric, which uh, has entered the fray. And this adds a real nice uh, spiciness. And this was actually a note that I detected in the second third of the La Punta. And then finally, the pepper that I sort of hinted at in the first third, that is definitely present now once we're into the second third, especially in the retro hell. And it does, uh, it does um, stimulate the nostrils to say the least. Furthermore, um, I'm actually a bit gutted because uh, I had a really nice stack going and suddenly it, it fell to pieces when it landed squarely on my desk. Um, but I got about half of the cigar um, stacking uh, as an ash. So the ash backbone here is quite impressive. Anyway, let's see what we get in the final third. I'll be with you in a moment. The final third is much less of a nicotine bomb as the second third. Its body has settled down back to medium. We're looking at um, a very resinous, uh, quite musky final third with a hint of wood. Uh, I'd liken the notes to be um, evocative of rosewood. Olibanum, which is another word for myrrh, it has a slight vanillary note. And labdanum, which is a sort of vegetal uh, musk. As for its overall complexity, it's perhaps not as complex as the La Punta, but what a ride it gives you. Uh, in terms of life cycle, it's far more developed. You get these uh, peaks and troughs and this, this real voyage of notes as you progress through the cigar. The mouthfeel is very smooth, the astringence is balanced, you don't have any excessive salivation or dryness in the mouth. However, the uh, palate stimulation does lean towards the front of the tongue, much like the La Punta did as well. The uh, finish uh, is quite long, it does last on the palate for quite a while, and the re residual scent in the room, much like La Punta, is fragrant, it's pleasant, and it's not overbearing. As for the draw, it's ideal all the way through the cigar, but in terms of temperature, it can warm up quite quickly if you rush through it. And because it's a small cigar, it's a little bit deceptive and you might hurry your way through it and take lots of puffs. Take your time, you'll probably get about 40 minutes of smoke out of this, uh, but in general, expect around 30 minutes of smoke time, maybe even 25 if you rush slightly, but anything less than that, and it might burn away the oils and uh, be a little bit too hot. The burn angle is generally, uh, is wavy but it's not uh it's not bad it's absolutely fine and in terms of ash backbone i did get some very nice ash on this especially in the first third and in the second third too it's quite impressive in terms of construction when it comes to the overall experience of the cigar well, we'll talk about the band first which is just here the band is just like any other san cristobal de la habana uh, it is basically the same design all the way through similarly the box will be of the same design as for example la punta where it's essentially um it's like a cardboard box that has been plastered with stickers and decals uh, to give it that distinctive Cuban appearance. As for the value, buying cigars, if you're in the USA, is always a legally gray area. There are retailers online where you can have them shipped over to the USA. I can't condone it due to the legality and being a bit of a complicated issue, but I have seen uh, retailers such as Bellhop Cigars, Monte Fortuna, and I Havana's who are trustworthy who will um, retail this for about $255 for a box of 25, which comes to about $6.20 a stick. That's, for such a small cigar, could be regarded as somewhat pricey, uh, but then again, it does offer you a very pleasant experience. Then when it comes to the occasion of this cigar, it is uh, a very versatile cigar that can be smoked casually if you're uh, short on time and you just want to have a nice little cigar, uh, between uh, several activities or during a, a lunchtime period. This is a great option. Personally, I would regard it as an ideal smoke for the early afternoon all the way to the early evening. It's a great option actually for after a business lunch to accompany uh, a coffee or even to precede uh, a meal as an aperitif. And finally, we're gonna talk about the ideal pairings. And this is just a thought exercise that we have here at the bottom right-hand corner of the uh, Cigar formula, it's not scored, it's just there uh, to give you some ideas. Well, first of all, bearing in mind like the business lunch uh, idea, uh, I considered uh, options like a ribeye steak or even a honey and soy duck salad. I believe that this would have the characteristics that would pair beautifully with a cigar or be um, great for preceding it and then being as a uh, digestif. 
Alternatively, you could easily accompany it with salted peanuts if you're just having like an aperitif and a beer. Then when it comes to beverages, my personal favorite would be an espresso and some grappa bianca. And you could either have them separately or have them together as an Amaza Cafe or a Cafe Coretto. Those would be great options indeed. It would certainly go well, especially if you're going to have it as a digestif after a business lunch, or you could just skip the grappa altogether and have it with an espresso coffee. Alternatively, Rui Boss tea would be a good choice, as would Earl Grey tea. So if you're more of a tea drinker, consider those. And then finally, perhaps consider an Aneo rum if you're in the evening and, you've, and you can have some alcohol. I think a floral neo rum such as, uh, for example, a Flor de Cana 18 would be an excellent choice. That's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions about the uh, San Cristobal de la Habana uh, El Principe, or if you want us to review any other cigars, and if you have your own experiences that you'd like to share. Until our next video, head to bespoken.com and see all the other men's lifestyle subjects that we'll cover. I'm sure that there'll be something that you will love.